Okay, Money in the Bank 2021. It was a really good show right up until a certain point, and it wasn't entirely WWE's fault. Uh, I guess I'll explain that a little bit when we get to there. Um, but to start things off, I mean, there was some good points. Obviously, it's nice to see a crowd back in an arena, a proper arena with people in it and everything, and you know, everyone, you know, couldn't help but take it in just a little bit and get people to chant and cheer and everything. And, you know, they interviewed, and here's the other funny thing, uh, they're talking about the Women's Money in the Bank match, and they interviewed Liv Morgan, and I guess because Liv's been crying so much now, they've decided to include the running mascara in her makeup, so now she has, like, fake, like, runny tears coming down her cheeks. It just looks so weird. Uh, yeah, exactly, it's like, I don't know if that's something you're supposed to be pushing like that, but okay. Uh, we did have a kickoff show match. It was the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, Rey and Dominic Mysterio versus the Usos. Uh, right off the bat, um, I think that it, they, I think Michael Cole goofed up his Usos because he called Jay Jimmy when it, yeah, exactly at one point. So I have weird notes in this. Uh, but Jay Uso was in the ring. The Mysterios hit him with a double hip toss, and then Dominic power bomb Rey onto Jim, uh, Jay. Sorry. Uh, then in sort of a repeat of. A couple days ago, when uh, uh, Jay cheap shotted Jimmy, or not uh, Ray, maybe we'll see the other way around. I can't remember. Yeah, they did the inverse with the other Uso taking a cheap shot at Ray with a forearm, uh, getting a pinning predicament out of that. Uh, but then Dominic came in, he had a spring body, a springboard into a clothesline on Jay. The Usos blocked across body and then swung Dominic into the barricade. Jimmy hit a small and drop from the second rope. Dominic countered that into a head scissors. Um, or tried to hit a small and drop from the second rope, but Dominic countered that into a head scissors. Ray gets the hot tag, hits Jay with a flying senton. Jimmy uh, blind tags and a super kick and a small and drop on Ray. Uh, basically, the end of the match happened when uh, there's sort of this big schmoz broke out. The Usos hit a Uso splash, but Ray just kicked out of it. And then as that was happening, uh, Dominic uh, break, broke up the pin and broke up another pin. Uh, that was a ready to kick out. Dominic broke up the pin, and then uh, kind of in the confusion, Jimmy or uh, Ray hit a six, went for a six one nine on Jay, but Jimmy took the bullet basically and hit the, took the blow, and that enabled Jay to get a super kick, and then another, and then get into a uh, kind of roll up position, and then uh, Jimmy. Or no, J Boy, I keep screwing this up. Uh, one of the Usos basically gave a little bit of leverage to the other so that they could get the three count of the victory to win the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Um, like I said a couple, at least at the last pay-per-view ago. But, uh, I mean, it's like you, that was probably going to happen at some point. Um, the Usos celebrate. You know, they talk about, you know, the, uh, the bloodline is now draped in gold. Just ignore the fact that the tag team championships are silver plated, but okay. Um, and uh, later uh, during the show, we did get a little backstage vignette where Reigns kind of gave his approval, but then he said, "You know, that's all only because I did all the heavy lifting for you. Now you need to properly acknowledge me, which the Usos do, but Jimmy kind of does so reluctantly." Uh, moving on to the show proper, we started off with the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Uh, Zelina Vega versus Asuka versus Naomi versus Nikki A.S.H. versus Alexa Bliss versus Natalia versus Tamina versus uh, Liv Morgan. Um, right off the bat, everyone kind of powdered out of the ring except for Alexa Bliss who just stood there in the corner the whole time. And when I say stood, she, like, she was up on like the second rope, just waiting. Uh, eventually she got down and tried to telepathically sway the briefcase into her hand. It didn't really seemed to work because Oscar came in and hit her with a German suplex. Naomi came in and hit, um, or, okay, a hit, boy, what did I write there? Shoot, sorry. Uh, she hit, um, Oscar, I think, with a, t or no, Tamina with a suit. Uh, no, sh Naomi hit Oscar with the rear view, that's what I wrote, and then Tamina hit Naomi with a super kick. Tamina uh, hit, uh, crashed, uh, boy, what did I write here? Tamina suplexed Bliss onto a lateral, let's just say that. 
Uh, Morgan climbed the ladder, but Tamina basically was underneath, tried to pin Tamina under the ladder and then climb it, but uh, Tamina basically just bench pressed it up and off. Uh, Morgan hit a recoil as, uh, on Asuka that was off of the ladder. Naomi attempted a springboard off the ladder, but Tamina caught her and entered a Samoan drop. Uh, at this point, Alexa Bliss and Selena Vega both tried to climb the ladder. Bliss then began hypnotizing Vega to climb back down the ladder. Bliss tried to get back up, but uh, Asuka interfered with a German suplex, and that broke up the hypnotism. Uh, Bliss hypnotizes Vega. Naomi power bombed Morgan onto Selena Vega through a ladder. Morgan then hit a... Uh, Basically, the high point of the match, I'll just get to that point. Uh, the other competitors all buried Alexa Bliss on a bunch of ladders. Nikki A.S.H., uh, uh, what was that? A wannabe su a type? Uh, no, aspiring superhero, that's it. He had a cross body off of a ladder back into the ring. Uh, like I said, they buried Alexa Bliss under a whole bunch of ladders. Uh, all of the other remaining seven competitors began fighting. Six of them were fighting on the ladder. Eventually, Nikki A.S.H., I gotta keep from saying Nikki Cross, uh, leapt the springboard and, and kind of climbed up all the ladders and crawled over everyone and managed to grab the briefcase to win the money in the bank. So, yeah, uh, kind of, I get, I kind of had a hunch that maybe that was where they were going because they did sort of redub Nikki Cross into this new sort of superhero gimmick and it seemed like she had gotten a few wins recently. I thought, well, you know, maybe they're sliding her up or something. And, you know, I know a lot of people thought it was going to be Liv Morgan because of the way that she was being booked in sort of the same manner. So I guess maybe that was where the surprise came from. It wasn't that, oh, it went to this person and it said, oh, it went to this per. You get the way. Yeah, you get what I mean, I guess. Uh, overall, the match is really entertaining. Again, a decent surprise ending. I am interested to see where the idea with uh, Nikki A.S.H. Going, is going with this. Uh, should be interesting. Should be fun. Um, uh, we'll probably get it to the women's title picture on Raw in uh, a few minutes here. Okay, our next match is the Raw Tag Team Championship match. AJ Styles and Omos versus the Viking Raiders. Uh, right off the bat, uh, Ivar got in the ring and uh, AJ immediately tagged in Omos. Uh, so Eric, or no, Ivar then tagged in Eric. Uh, Styles hit Ivar with a jumping knee smash. Um, at one point, uh, they were trying to do some sort of move, and this happened a few times where mid move they suddenly cut to a shot of the crowd. Like, I guess they're just not used to shooting a crowd anymore because, yeah, they're doing it mid move, and so no one's seeing what the big move was. Uh, eventually, Ivar uh, threw Styles into a knee smash from Eric. Omas assists Styles into performing head scissors on the outside of the ring. Omas then blocked a maneuver off of the road. Uh, blocked a maneuver off the rope and kind of sla uh, body slammed Ivar. Uh, Ivar uh, managed to kind of uh, dagger Styles with a forearm and then tagged in Eric. Uh, the Raiders hit a lariat into a German suplex on Styles. Styles uh, hit Ivar with a top rope. Uh, no, no, tripped him on the top rope. I'm sorry, that's what he did. He tripped him on the top rope. My notes are terrible on this. Uh, and uh, got to the tag in to Omas. Omas came in, uh, hit a block to Senton, uh, threw Styles into Eric. Eric hit a suicide dive on the Styles. Yeah, no, hit a suicide dive on Omas, and we then and Styles then tried to sneakily roll, roll up Ivar. Uh, he kicked out at the Vikings. Uh, the Raiders hit the Viking experience, but Omas broke the pin by pushing Eric into the pin predicament. Uh, a scenario that has been playing out way too much in modern tag matches, if you've heard anything recently. It's like, yeah, this is happening a bit too... It's like, it went from once in a while to happening in every tag match now. Uh, eventually, Omos hit the double choke slam on Ivar for the three count of the victory. Um, really good match, though. This was actually really fun to watch. Uh, definitely had some moments where it looked like maybe the Viking Raiders might pull off an upset, and so it did have a convincing feel to it, and so I think uh, AJ and Omos are actually really jelling together while well as a tag team, so. Uh, Omos is still a little bit green, so I don't know if I need to see him in a long singles match, but uh, he is definitely learning his craft pretty well here. And that leads us into our next match, the WWE Championship match, Bobby Lashley against Kofi Kingston. Uh, right off the bat, Kofi tried to basically charge in kind of a Trouble in Paradise type maneuver, but 
MVP tripped him, but Kofi managed to dodge a charging uh, a, a, a charging Lashley and then tried to catch him in a small package, but Lashley got out of it, by a big suplex. Uh, he blocked a flying chop and a spine buster. He then threw uh, Kofi face first on the post. He had flapjacks, he had flatliners. Uh, he put the hard lock, uh, hurt lock on once, but then he just kind of took it and swung Kofi into like a T-bone suplex type maneuver. Uh, Lashley then hit three dominators and then locked on the hurt lock and eventually Kofi just tapped out. So, uh, yep, that was your Kofi Kingston Bobby Lashley feud. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of, he certainly got, Kofi certainly got better treatment than he did against Brock Lesnar, but man, I, you know, you kind of wish that match had been just a little bit better. I mean, maybe Kofi could have done a couple of things look like he could have pulled something off instead. I mean, it just, it really kind of fell short. Uh, if you're hoping for that Brock Lesnar return, it did not happen tonight, unfortunately. I guess, unfortunately. Um, uh, and, yeah, it seems that, yeah, we're moving on to SummerSlam now, whatever uh, that future holds for Lashley. And so let's just go on to our next match, which is the Raw Women's Championship match, Rhea Ripley against Charlotte Flair. Uh, right off the bat, Charlotte, uh, get a, 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 she crotch chopped and flipped off the fans, and they had to go to the delayed black screen. So, yeah, she, I don't know if that was supposed to happen, but yeah. Uh, right off the bat, though, Ripley blocked a kick and kind of swing that to a trip maneuver on Charlotte. Uh, Ripley hit a double stomp off the second rope onto the ring apron. Uh, Charlotte dodged a uh, crack smash and then drop kicked uh, Ripley into the barricade. Uh, Ripley then blocked a knee and uh, tried to uh, oh, and send Charlotte over the top rope. Uh, Ripley hit a northern light suplex. Charlotte came back, hit, uh, blocked a missile drive kick and locked on a Boston Crab. Rip uh, Ripley uh, blocked a takedown into a big suplex. Basically, uh, Ripley had Charlotte up in the electric chair. Charlotte rolled out of that, but Ripley caught her, kind of picked her up like in a powerbomb maneuver, but then modified that into a suplex. It was actually a pretty impressive maneuver. They didn't quite pull it off smoothly, but it worked pretty well. Um, Ripley blocked a natural selection at one point. Charlotte came back. She had a, a top rope natural selection, only got a two count on it. And this is when Charlotte kind of snapped. She caught Ripley in a maneuver and threw her into the ring, threw, threw her side head, threw her head into the side of the ring post a couple of times, then she took Ripley's knee, put it in the ring steps and stomped on the ring steps, uh, selling an injury, so Charlotte then locked on the figure eight and Ripley eventually tapped out. Um, and if you're hoping for a Becky Lynch return, uh, sorry that did not happen despite the crowd's constant begging for it. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately that crowd, this is probably one point where the crowd really kind of ruined the match, because it was a darn good match again. Um, not happy about Char- and you know, I said, well now Ripley can win it back at SummerSlam in front of a crowd, but it's like Ripley won it. It just, it's not going to be the same, you know? Uh, you know, again, if we're building up towards Becky Lynch returning, why not have Ripley, Becky Lynch at SummerSlam, which will probably draw way more attention than another Ripley Charlotte match. I mean, this is the fourth one we fourth or fifth one we've had now, so yeah. Um, and you know, again, no Becky Lynch. So yeah, again, uh, maybe tune in to Monday. I know she was in Fort Worth, but you know that could have just been a stopover to tease people. So yeah, uh, again, this is probably where the crowd constantly begging for Becky to come out just didn't and when it didn't happen. It, yeah, because like yeah. You know, you're breaking my hold on the match, basically. Okay, so this is where the real big problem with this show hit. And again, it's not entirely WWE's fault. It's Peacock's. The stream basically just completely buggered out. Uh, it didn't completely drop. It would come back. It was it was very kind of staticky, basically. Like it would come in and be like jerky, 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 black screen. Jerky, jerky, jerky. Yeah, like you get little bits and flashes as we were going into the next match. And uh, it actually started during a promo that was airing in between. And that's why I kind of thought, okay, is it, you know, the internet where I'm at or is it something else? And I'm looking, you know, I backed out a couple of times, went back, reset my Roku, went back in, still doing it. And, you know, went on to Twitter. And, you know, they pretty much confirmed that, yeah, everyone was going through this, or at least everyone who was watching it on Peacock. and you know, not, you know, internationally. 
So yeah, that's where um, that started to clue in. Like yeah, okay, something's up here. And like I said, it's not entirely WWE's fault. I mean, I don't know how much control they have with Peacock over that. Uh, eventually, the stream did come back. You had to basically re you had to exit and then re-enter completely. I don't know if I had to go all the way back to the main menu or if I just had to back out and then go back in. But yeah, eventually it came back. But uh, unfortunately, by that point, about 20 minutes of the match was gone. Uh, and that match was the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Kevin Owens versus Riddle versus Shinsuke Nakamura versus Big E versus Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins versus uh, John Morrison versus uh, Ricochet. And you know, like I said, that's where the, it, the whole stream started to break down at that point and yeah um, you could tell it's unfortunately it's like seemed like there was a lot going on in this match that really was kind of cool i know morrison and rollins teamed up briefly as they were they fought briefly on the outside the uh, you know both of them doing this whole drip drip style thing and uh they actually fought with the drip drip guns uh briefly but then they started working together they took out uh mcintyre and big e and nakamura and then Owens came in, he had a moonsault on, and sent a ladder into Morrison and Rollins. Uh, that's about the time the stream finally snapped back in and started working. Uh, Riddle hit an arc, right around the time Riddle hit, started hitting an RKO off the ladders. He did that a few times in this match. Uh, McIntyre came in, he had a double Claymore on Nakamura and Riddle. Uh, then hit a future shock onto Big E. At that point, it looked like McIntyre was going to climb the ladder, but then uh, Jinder Mahal and his lackeys, whose name escapes me at the moment, uh, not the Singh brothers, two different ones, uh, they hit the ring and attacked McIntyre and carried him off to the back. So, uh, much to the jubilation of the crowd. Like, earlier McIntyre cut a promo and they were booing, and it's like, are they booing or are they saying Drew? I was like, yeah, because I know there have been some people who have been a little I mean, The problem is, again, when you've done McIntyre for so long, People are kind of getting a little tired of it, especially when he's failed in what three or his last three or four attempts to win the championship back. Yeah, it just, it's like uh, the bloom was off the rose there. Uh, at this point, uh, Ricochet came in. He hit a 450. He basically was falling off the ladder. He caught himself on the top rope and bounced into this 450 splash onto everyone else. Uh, Riddle was climbing. Uh, Ricochet got back in. He fought with Riddle on the ladder. Rollins began interfering. Uh, he had a stomp. Rollins came back and powerbomb Owens off a ladder after a series of, uh, Owens came in and hit a series of stunners is what happened. Uh, then Rollins hit a powerbomb off the ladder, sending Owens to another ladder on the outside of the ring. Rollins was climbing up there. It looked like he was going to be the one to get it, but then Big E got just underneath him and hit a big ending off the ladder uh, and then climbed up to grab the, beef, the briefcase, not the briefcase, sadly, uh, to become your new uh, men's money in the bank. Uh, winner. So, yes, uh, I think Big E was maybe the likely favorite outside of McIntyre. It's like, I know a lot of people said Rollins because they they're trying to build to something, but, uh, you know, I, can, we've done that with Rollins. <laughs> exactly. It's like we've been, I, I'm not a fan of the repeat Money in the Bank winners. Like, you know, yeah, it, when Edge did it, it was understandable because uh, Mr. Kennedy was hurt at the time. And hey, yeah, they had to basically drop it so that someone could cash in on The Undertaker because he was also hurt at that point. Who oh boy. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, uh, you had CM Punk. And that one worked pretty well. I mean, like, that's probably the only one that really worked. And then, uh, and then after that, you had The Miz. And, yeah, we saw that played out. So, yeah, it's like you can see where this doesn't always seem to click very well. And so, yeah, it's, uh, Big E definitely deserves it. Definitely has momentum behind him. Uh, I don't know who he's going to cash in on. The prevailing rumor right now is that uh, when the WWE draft is held some point in the fall, uh, Big E is going to be moving to Raw. So uh, he could cash in on Reigns maybe, but maybe they wait and have him cash in you know, after that or even before it on, say, Lashley or something whenever that may be. So, yeah, again, could be interesting, could be nice, it could be fun. I hope that kind of works. Don't know if what that means uh, in terms of a possible New Day reunion, but it uh, seems kind of unlikely at this point. I think everyone's kind of happy where they are. So, yeah, um, 
like I said, uh, I probably would say a lot more about the Smash Bros. Fortune. It's just marred by, you know, the stream going all wonky. So, and again, not entirely WWE's fault, outside of the fact that, you know, if the WWE Network were still around, I don't think we would have had anywhere near these problems if they weren't on Peacock. If they hadn't, you know, no, we had to sell to Peacock, or we had to sell programming to ESPN Plus, or enter some sort of bidding war like that. <sighs> Anyway, that leads us into our main event match, the WWE Universal Championship between Roman Reigns and Edge. Uh, just before the match began, Rollins in the back was upset because he blew his chance again to go, to go after the Universal Championship, uh, said he was going to challenge the winner. I don't know what his idea of challenging the winner means because that's not really what happens. Um, Reigns and Edge literally kind of like thumbed each other's noses at one point. Uh, Reigns sent Reg Edge out of the ring with a shoulder tackle. Uh, this is the main problem with this match. This thing was way too slow in the start. It was a lot of holding and pushing and shoving and pushing and shoving and pushing and shoving. Uh, it eventually started to pick up. Uh, Reigns threw Edge into the post a few times. Uh, Reigns left on his side headlock. He kind of uh, got Edge spot out of it, sort of got a huge uppercut from Reigns and fell into the bottom ring rope that enabled Reigns to hit the drive-by dropkick. Edge did come back, he countered a Superman punch into a backslide, and then both men hit big boots on each other. Edge came back, he hit the Edge-O-Matic, he hit the Implant DDT, uh, he hit a Bulldog that sent uh, Reigns face first into the ring post. Edge locked on an SDF, Reigns kind of countered, and got, eventually got to the ropes. So uh, Edge went for the spear, but Reigns countered that into a guillotine. Edge. Uh, dodged a spear attempt from Reigns and uh, threw him into the tackle. It was on the outside of the ring and threw him into the timekeeper's area. Edge then speared Reigns through the barricade. Reigns came back in a Superman punch, but Edge fell into the ref, which knocked him out. And uh, in the confusion to try to see what was going on, uh, Reigns took a chair. He stomped out the little bar uh, in between the legs that Edge has been using. He tried to lock Edge in uh, a cross face with that bar, but Edge fought out of that and locked Reigns in the crossface, at which point the Usos, hit, the ref is still out at this point, the Usos hit the ring, but the Mysterios cut, or start headed toward the ring, the Mysterios cut them off, and they're fighting on the outside. It's then that Rollins gets into the ring, and he super kicks Edge in the back of the neck. Uh, it's at this point the ref finally gets back, uh, the new, uh, new ref comes to the ring, but at this point, and Edge had speared Reigns again, covered, but only got a two count because the ref took too long to get there. Uh, Rollins got back in and interfered again, distracting Edge long enough for Reigns to hit the spear and get the three count. Um, like I said, uh, this match was okay. It, it picked up towards the end, but it was way too slow in the beginning. Like, there was kind of a... This thing was almost an hour long. This thing started at 9.30 and the show ended at like 10.25. So it's like, you really could have cut like 20 minutes out of this match. I think it would have been so much better. Um, afterwards, Rollins attacked Edge. He then got up and looked at Reigns and said, you owe me now, I got it made you keep your championship, you owe me. But then Edge attacked Rollins and they brawled into the crowd. And then uh, Reigns got on the mic and says, you must now acknowledge me. And then John Cena's music hits. John Cena hits the ring, does the you can't see me to Reigns' face, and that's how the show ends. So no real physical confrontation there or anything. I know... Uh, Cena did get on the mic afterwards, but at that point the broadcast had cut off, so... Okay. Um, not really too surprising. Uh, it was kind of confirmed that uh, Reigns was going to be taking on Cena at SummerSlam. Uh, basically, again, they kind of need another sort of big name to... You know, this was the first, you know, pay-per-view back with a full crowd, but SummerSlam was the first, you know, the really big shows in front of the crowd again. So that's really going to, you know, they need something to be a big draw and, you know, all due respect to Edge, like, he's great, he was a great champion, he's a deserved Hall of Famer, but he was never really the biggest draw in the company. John Cena was. So, again, and not to mention Mr. Cena has a couple of movies to promote, so uh, he's always got that going for him. Uh, like I said, I don't know how the title picture is going to shake out now if you know, Big E, you know, cashes in SummerSlam. Does he cash in on Lashley? Does he cash in on, 
you know, I just say, well, no, I don't. Um, that's you know, that whole scene on SmackDown is a little too muddled. Maybe over here, where Lashley even said, like, there's no one for me to face anymore. To, yeah, where that's kind of the thing with Lashley in the same position. You know, maybe he says, no, I'm gonna do that or something. I don't know. Uh, but like I said, that would be kind of interesting. Um, don't know entirely. I know Goldberg is supposed to show up tomorrow night. Like, you know, hopefully we don't get Goldberg. Like, you know, like, getting Goldberg at the Royal Rumble was bad enough. Like, do we really need another Goldberg match for SummerSlam? And, or is he good, is he the backup plan just in case we can't get Lesnar in? Because that's the other prevailing rumor. Which, again, does not inspire me too much. I'd rather just see Big E come in and say, No, I am challenging Lashley at SummerSlam. Here. And that would work, too. That would actually make me way happier. Even if he didn't win. So, that's sort of the whole thing. And, you know, overall, this show was pretty good. I, I was really enjoying it. Right up until the stream got all wonky, like I said. And I, I know that's not entirely WWE's fault. But, yeah, it's just... That really soured the point, and again, then having that eternity of a match in the main event that just went on way too long for its own good, uh, really, really knocked this down. Uh, I'm going to give this a C. Uh, I don't know if I could really go far enough into a D. Like, like I said, most of the show is still pretty darn good, so I don't want to you know, completely say the whole show was bad because of it, but yeah, it, unfortunately it got left with a real sour taste in my mouth towards the end there. Okay, so the next uh, WWE pay-per-view is SummerSlam. That is on August 21st, which is a Saturday. Again, another prevailing rumor at this time is that there's going to be an NXT TakeOver the Sunday after that, but they have not announced that yet, so you know I can't say for certain that that's going to happen. And, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's late. Uh, um, the next video is going to be the recap and review for... The Mighty One Season 2, and then uh, next week it will be uh, Jungle Cruise, and then after that it will be the Random Trade Review on Archie Love Showdown. See you all next time. guys, remember to check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions where you can help me expand my wrestling coverage to stuff beyond WWE, NXT, and the occasional AEW free show.